The last topic that we will be talking about for this morning will be about skin infestations. The following are skin diseases we will be discussing under this topic. Insect bites are cutaneous reactions to a bite or a sting. The cardinal symptom of this condition is the itch. Lesions are described as erythematous pruritic papules with a central punctum. Lesions may be solitary, linear, or even in group patterns. Here are some photos of insect bite reactions. This is due to bed bugs. This photo shows multiple erythematous papules discrete and scattered in the upper torso area while in group pattern at the lower part of the torso. Sometimes lesions may be numerous, like this one, or they may just be described as will-like lesions. In some children, because of the severe inflammation, the lesions are observed to be vesicular or bullous type. Please note that the lesion of the hand in this photo shows the typical erythematous papule with a central punctum. Because most lesions are pruritic, some patients may present also with secondary exoriations and erosions, and sometimes also secondary bacterial infection. Treatment of insect bites are application of a topical corticosteroid to decrease inflammation and oral intake of an antihistamine for pruritus. Prevention will depend on where the source of the bites are from. If they are from their home, then bug sprays or insecticides may help. And if it's from their pets, then a visit to the veterinarian or treat with medicated dog or cat shampoo is advised. It may also help that the patient apply some insect repellent or wear protective clothes. Now let's go to the second skin infestation. This is scabies. Scabies is also called curicong in our local dialect. This is also very contagious. The causative agent is a human itch mite called Sarcoptes cabei varia humanus. Transmission of scabies is from person to person through close skin to skin contact. Animals usually may harbor also the mite, but they are considered transient carriers, which means that the mite is species specific, only affects the humans. Fomites or inanimate objects play only a minor role in the transmission of the disease. The cardinal symptom of scabies is nocturnal pruritus, which means it's itchy at night time. Actually, experts say that the pruritus is already present even in daytime. But because patient is busy doing its usual daily activities, hence did not mind this. While at night, when patient is resting, that's when the pruritus is noticeable and intensified. Here are some photos of this mite. Adult scabies mite. Okay. The lesions of scabies are often described as small excoriated papules. And because they're also very itchy, patients tend to scratch it. So often you see also weeping eczematoid papules and also secondary bacterial infections. Sites of predilection of scabies is known as the circle of Hebra. The circle of Hebra comprises of the following areas, the finger and toe webs, the axillary area, peri-umbilical area, the wrist, the abdomen, groin, and buttocks. Here will be some photos of scabies lesions. Palm of an infant with the pruritic papules, finger webs and dorsum of hand of a teenager, excoriated papules, axillary folds with papules and some nodules in an infant. Here also another photo of pruritic papules, ankle flexure of an infant. The mite buries underneath the epidermis and this is where they stay and lay their eggs. This is called a burrow. So, 
This one is a picture of a burrow where the mite is and their eggs and also sometimes their fecal materials. So the diagnostic lesion for scabies is the burrow, which is described as small, crooked, fine lines of about 4 to 6 millimeters in length. Common sites where you can find the burrow are the finger and toe webs, the flexor aspect of the wrist, the lateral and medial aspect of the foot. Here is a photo of a burrow which was injected with some ink for easy identification. Here is a magnified photo of the burrow. Laboratory or diagnostic test to demonstrate the mite or the eggs are the ink burrow test or you can do also skin biopsy. The procedure for the ink burrow test consists of scraping one end of the burrow with a small blade, then the material is placed on a glass slide, and you look under micro microscope for the mites, the eggs, or the fecal pellets. For biopsy, you do a histopathological examination to demonstrate the mites or the eggs. This is a photo of the histopathological examination from the skin biopsy. Differential diagnosis of scabies are the following. These diseases are also very pruritic. Treatment of scabies are divided into four areas. Eradication of the mite from the patient. You try to remove also eradicate the mite from family or close personal contacts. You try to destroy or clean suspected areas or from the patient's surrounding and also treat other associated symptoms that the patient may have. Let's start with eradication of the mite from the patient and from, the fa from family and close personal contacts. So what we have will be scabicidal drugs. So the first drug I'm going to talk about will be 5% permethrin lotion. This is the drug of choice for scabies. It is applied all over the body, sparing the head and neck area for two consecutive nights. You leave it on overnight or at least for six to eight hours. Then wash off the medicine in the morning. The medicine is applied for another two consecutive nights after one week. Permitim lotion is contraindicated in infants less than 2 months of age and for pregnant and lactating women. Another drug that we can use will be 10% crotamiton lotion. This is safe for infants and pregnant women but effectivity is just around 60 to 70%. This drug is no longer available in our local market. 5% sulfur in ointment or lotion formulation is cheap and effective also for scabies. This can be used for patients less than 2 months of age and for pregnant and lactating women. Sulfur ointment or lotion is applied every night, live on overnight for 5 consecutive nights. Another drug that we can use is 10 to 20% benzyl benzoate lotion. Problem with this drug is that it can burn and irritate the skin, so it's not very popular. In case all the above mentioned scabicidal drugs are not working well for your patient, then you may want to try oral ivermectin. It is computed at 200 microgram per kilogram per dose, given as a single dose for scabies unres unresponsive to conventional therapies or for a specific type of scabies called Norwegian scabies. So far, this drug has not yet been approved by US FDA for scabies. But there are many researches or studies that they use this drug already for patients, for HIV patients presenting also with scabies.
Treatment of associated symptoms for scabies should also be addressed. Associated symptoms for scabies should also be addressed. For pruritus, your oral antihistamines. For the scabetic nodules, topical corticosteroid creams. And if you see some secondary bacterial infections, then you should start giving your antibiotics. Let's go to the next infestation. Next one is your pediculosis capitis or what we call the head lice. In our local dialect, we call this kutu. This is caused by a louse, plural is lice, called the pediculus humanus capitis, which is species and region specific. These lice are wingless and can pierce the string skin to suck blood. Here is a picture of the louse and a portrait of the pediculus capitis family. Pruritus of the scalp and sides of the scalp is often the clinical symptom or chief complaint of the patient. Lesions are described as excoriated papules and er excoriations. Lesions are described as excoriated papules because patients also tend to scratch a lot. This will also sometimes result to falling hair and secondary bacterial infection. Here are some photos of the louse and needs adhering to the hair shaft. The following are the differential diagnosis for head lice. The drug of choice for pediculosis capitis is your 1% permethrin shampoo. This is applied on wet hair and scalp. You leave it on for about 30 to 45 minutes depending on the length and the thickness of hair. Then you rinse it off. This procedure is repeated after one week. During the interval before the repeated application of your 1% permethrin shampoo, as much as possible, you have to get rid of the adult lice and the nits. With the help of a nit comb or what we call locally as suyud. Remember, the 1% permethrin shampoo does not Take care of the nits. You have to manually remove it from the hair shaft. Here is a photo of a nit comb, some lice, and also nits that is still adherent to the hair shaft. Next will be pediculosis corporis or your body lice. This is caused by your pediculus humanus humanus, region specific to the body of the patient. Treatment is the same as pediculosis capitis, which is 1% permethrin shampoo. Application is the same also as that of the head lice. Okay. Photo of a body louse. Lesions for this one is also non-specific, described as pruritic excoriated papules, sometimes weeping papules, and often with secondary bacterial infection because of the scratching of the patient. Next we will talk about is a close cousin of the head lice and the body lice. This is the pediculosis pubis. This is caused by Tereus pubis, also known as the crab louse. Transmission of the disease is by sexual contact in about 95% of cases. Macular cerulei, described as blue-black macules, represent ingested blood or their excreta. The nits are found adherent to the pubic hair, and the adult lice are found at the base of the hair shaft, looking like freckles or moles. The treatment for this disease is 1% permethrin shampoo. Here are photos of the crab louse.
and some clinical photos of pediculosis pubis and a female genitalia. Closer view, you can see those black dots which actually are the adult lice. And this one is a picture of the macula cerulei or the blue-black macules, blue-black dots. The last infestation that we're going to talk about is their cutaneous larva migrants. This is caused by the larval stage of the hookworm, Necator americanus or Ancylostoma brasiliensis. Lesions are described as irregular or bizarre thread-like lesions with surrounding erythema. These lesions migrate few millimeters every few days from its original site. The drug of choice is topical thiabendazole, but we do not have this medicine locally. Another treatment that we can use will be cryosurgery. Here's a picture of a hookworm. Its life cycle wherein we get the larval stage that penetrates the skin of the patient. Actual picture of a cutaneous larva migrants case with a lot of the larvae that have pierced already the skin of the patient. And here's another case of cutaneous larva migrants where in one end is more erythematous and inflamed. So this is where the larva is. So it must have come from this part working its way now to this area. Let's have a short activity for self-assessment. I have three questions for you. One, which of the following is the cardinal symptom of scabies? Excoriated papules, nocturnal pruritus, scabetic nodules, or secondary bacterial infection? Although all of these symptoms are found in scabies, okay, the cardinal symptom for scabies is nocturnal pruritus. Next question. The following are scabicidal drugs except A. 5% permethrin lotion B. 5% sulfur lotion C. Thiabendazole lotion D. Benzyl benzoate lotion the answer here is thiabendazole lotion because this drug is used for cutaneous larva migrants, while A, B, and D are drugs for scabies. Last question for this topic. Which of the following may be considered as sexually transmitted? Is it scabies, pediculosis corporis, pediculosis pubis, or cutaneous larva migrants? The answer to this question is your pediculosis pubis. 95% of cases or transmission for pediculosis pubis is sexual contact. So that's it for this lecture.